But let's talk about, let's go to Minnesota, where two ex-cops <coughs> who were convicted in federal court of violating George Floyd's civil rights, uh, they are headed to prison. A federal judge sentenced Tao Fowl to three and a half years and J. Alexander King to three years in prison for their involvement in the death of George Floyd. Uh, King was the one who pinned Floyd's back, and Thao held back bystanders while Derek Chauvin knelt on Floyd's uh, neck for nine and a half minutes. Prosecutors say King didn't say anything to stop Chauvin. U.S. District Judge Paul Magnuson cited King's rookie status as a reason for the lighter sentence. The federal prosecutor, Amanda Sertic, disagreed, saying, quote, all he had to do per MPD, Minneapolis Police Department policy, was an attempt to intervene. But he didn't say a word, not one word. Defendant King's war argument about his junior status doesn't hold much weight because the bar for him was so low and he didn't even try to get over it. King and Fowl now wait a state, uh, wait a state trial on October 24th where they face uh, aiding and abetting second-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter charges. Uh, Robert, obviously, this was different from Chauvin's case, where the state went first, then the feds uh, came. This th Here, the feds went first, and then the state. Uh, just your assessment of the officers involved in the death of George Floyd going to prison. Uh, well, I think it's great that we can have a conviction in cases like this, which is a divergence from historical precedents. Uh, but at the same time, this is a ridiculously light sentence. Uh, if you put this in the uh, civilian context, it was just uh, one person commits a murder, another person holds the person down, another person holds the crown, uh, crowd back. Uh, they all would have been charged with felony murder or, or under accomplice liability and all face the exact same punishment. In this case, you have somebody serving three and a half years, which is less than a slap on the wrist uh, when it comes to the amount of time they will actually serve uh, for the uh, ostensive aiding and abetting or being party to a murder. And so I think we, uh, uh, while we can uh, celebrate the fact that the justice system has worked in some measure, we do have to ensure there's parity uh, and fairness in our judicial system where simply being a quote-unquote rookie cop doesn't uh, uh, inoculate you from the full uh, punishment of the law that any other citizen would face. Uh, Monique, I was at the Rock Nation Social Justice Conference uh, and uh, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison uh, was on one of the panels. And he said, folks, let's be clear. Your protest made the prosecution possible. Your protest is what is working to hold these folks accountable. And so because he was answering a question for some people who say, well, you know what? Protest doesn't do anything. It really, uh, it really isn't enough. And his whole point was, no, that has to continue because that's why we are seeing the kind of pressure we put on DAs and others to actually prosecute cops for wrongdoing. Yeah, and I, I think that's disgraceful. Um, I, I, I think that he's correct. And I think that the protests have proven to be necessary for that purpose. But it is not supposed to be the case that prosecutors are swayed one way or the other due to public pressure when their obligation is to apply the law and to uh, prosecute crimes, to charge and prosecute cases that they know that they, or at least they strongly believe, can be proven guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, and, and the fact that it's necessary uh, for, for millions to take to streets all over the world to get uh, sworn oath-taking government officials to do their constitutional duty is a disgrace. Jason. Yeah, I, I honestly just want to echo what, what Monique said. Um, I think that it's terrifying um, that one way or the other, that public pressure can lead to indictments. I think that, that that's a slippery slope. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't want for someone to be angry at Roland Martin, uh, and then you see a bunch of right-wing protesters, and then you get a, a BS indictment. So I, I think one of the things that we have to expect from our law enforcement officials, which includes district attorneys and state's attorneys, uh, and of course ADAs, is uh, of course for them to apply the, the, the law and for them to hold people accountable. And in, the, in this particular case, these men clearly aided 
in the death of George Floyd and should have been punished and should have been and tried the, and, and uh, held accountable the way they were. But it should not come from public protest. I think that that's a dangerous, you know, I pronounce it precedent. Uh, now I'm like questioning myself because I keep hearing uh, my, my brother, Robert Patillo, say precedent. Um, but, you know, it, it sets a, a dangerous tone for the future where that can be held against, uh, you know, innocent people uh, are put through a prosecution because of public pressure. And it shouldn't be that way. Um, can I add something? Well, here's the deal. Here, here, here. Yeah. I was just going to say, it's not a dangerous precedent for a few, for the future. Um, we've actually seen those things uh, play out. Perhaps people have heard of a case where a, a well-known um, veteran entertainer was, due to public pressure and due to the cry of the mob, uh, prosecuted by a, a state-elected prosecutor in the state of Pennsylvania, um, who waited until the... 11th hour before the statute of limitations ran to charge uh, an over-decade-old case. And ultimately, on appeal, uh, that case was dismissed. And the only reason that that happened was because of public pressure. So when the prosecutor does the right thing because of pre public pressure, it's wrong. When the prosecutor does the wrong thing because of public pressure, it's wrong. In either instance, we have the right to our voices. We always should use them. That's why we have elections. We put those people in office if they've run for those offices. Um, but for a prosecutor to bend to the will or the emotions of people in making decisions about violations of the law and of the Constitution is in error. It is misconduct. Well, look, I understand the point that Keith Ellison was making and what he was trying to say to people is that taking to the streets protest does indeed matter because it's about holding people accountable. And the bottom line is this here. It's not like we've actually seen a plethora of DAs doing the right thing by prosecuting people. So I understand this point, and I agree with it 100%. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?